on to the last segment and i hope that all of the juice that we've not been able to squeeze from the beginning were able to you know get from this session mm -hmm. it's about it's about self-care so how you care for yourself what are the things that you you make sure must be in place to keep you you keep you 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 know keep you sane keep you happy yes this is what this session is about so my first question would be what is your 24 hour clock like on a work day and on the weekend i am asking because there's there may be somebody you know watching who would like to know how you're able to navigate and manage your time on a daily basis so can you walk us through what your 24 hour day is like okay so i i i start my day by 5 a.m okay on a normal day unless something else is going to wake me up by four but typically on my own terms five and then five to six is my time for my prayer, worship, and reading of the Bible. Six thirty to eight thirty is my physical fitness time. Is that from the spiritual? Jump with the bond. You can tell. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I do a mix of weightlifting and walking and. Yeah. I, there was time I ran so much I was very skinny at that time because I used to run half marathons every Saturday but I don't run that much anymore yeah. my knees are telling when I hit the, the, the road, road. Yeah. Yeah. so I don't run that much anymore so I lift more now and then I walk way more and incorporate some running I do that from 6.30 to 8.30 on a work day that's 2 hours yes 2 hours oh body fitness, fitness. <laughs> and i'm lucky enough that i'm able to get ready in time in, in 30 minutes is more than enough time for me to get ready for anything to shower get ready get ready and go and i'm off to work but there's this angle of my kids getting ready for school in this mixed trip but god god, god being kind I, my kids are a bit bigger now and you know i told you that there are things you can do per time and this time i'm not very active in Bathing, bathing a child to bathe themselves yeah and I'm, I'm not going to feed them to feed themselves so it's just to pack lunch for school and a school bus takes them to school so i'm not really in the morning my mornings are not about my kids they're around me and i'm off to work i'm done from work by four but i'm home between 5 30 to 6 and then i fit in everything else that i have to do bit school bit studying also, I try to always have a book I'm reading. For time. Yes. And I read that at that time, catch up with friends, go online, do some Instagram and WhatsApp in. Uh, have very important conversations with my children. I like to know what at the end of their day. What stood out to them during the day, what challenges they had. And they asked, they're going to ask me any questions. At so this time, my phone is going to be away so that i can be present and you know that they have to be actively, be present. actively present yeah and then we all prepare for bed make sure there's dinner you know eat and i sleep by night i don't i don't i don't play with my sleep time it is important very my circadian clock is set for night if i'm awake the most you can find me awake for is maybe 10 but at 10 the sleep is dragging my shirt you are struggling to be awake at ten. I feel like falling on my face. Yeah, I agree. I, I am like that too. But my day starts on a normal day by like three a.m. On a day where I am not so tired because there are days that you just cannot but give your body the rest that you need. Start by like three a.m. I run it to like nine. Max you see me awake is around that ten o'clock because. Mm -hmm. It's really important. We're doing it like that for a reason. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but some persons are like night callers. It's not, it's not a problem. It depends on what what works for you. And every time, at some point, but they don't wake up early. And they don't have lots to do. Yeah. Do you understand? Once you shut down, your body has to reset so, and, and then to rebuild. You know, lost strength and lost energy. So you don't wake up you, you don't wake up in the morning you're already tired before the day started yeah you're you're, you're tired mentally physically so you cannot care for yourself you cannot care for your kids you can't even kick out to your husband and then you know we still have to be sisters and friends and and daughters to our parents Honestly. as well 
So it's a whole lot that we have to be. You know, I mentioned this in, in the beginning too. I can't remember all point, but that you have to plan. You have to put your time in. But yeah, when I was doing actively breastfeeding. Yeah. If you don't plan, you can't. If you can't achieve it. All right. So this next question I'm asking on behalf of newly married people like mm-hmm. myself, <laughs> and you know, even single ladies who are waiting to be married. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So please educate us. What are your coping mechanisms as a mom, as a wife, and as a career woman? You know, I I, I had to drag single ladies into this because they have a lot going on for them even if they're not married. So they shouldn't be excluded. Yes. Some some single women are busier than most moms. I agree. Yes. So I agree. how do you cope? What are, what are your coping mechanisms with you know trying to navigate all of this? You know, how do you stay composed without losing your steam? Mm. <laughs> yeah. So for me, first of all, who, who am I? You have to dissect the person into what they really are. In this case, you are a spirit, you have a body, and you live in a soul, right? So you have to cater to all three aspects of you to cope. Yeah, key, right? Good. So the spirit, how do you keep your spirit? strong because even no matter how the body and the soul are fed without a strong spirit you can't cope right yeah. so you attack everything from all what feeds which and for the spirit i'm i'm a very godly spiritual person i i i don't play with my worship so i i think my favorite part of serving god and spend time with god is to worship because I'm, I, I believe that I was created to worship. So it feeds me in a very, very different way because the words and songs are also very edifying and then they remind me of who I, I, I am and then they play in my head all day. You know, when your mind wanders away from anything, there's a song in your head. And that song is something positive, something edifying, something you worship. I, I enjoy that that's where I fall back to spiritually. And then for my soul, I, I'm, 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 one of the motors I have is, is called Kaizen. It's an act of continuous learning. So the coping way for me, I don't know how to stay in it, but I always want to keep learning. So it won't help, it has helped also in my career path because I would just want to keep learning. I feel nothing, no information is a waste, so I feed my, my soul with knowledge good knowledge yeah. selective knowledge not just everything everything out yes there. yeah also very key to be sensitive to things you let enter yourself you know they have to be spiritually aligned with what you stand for, for. And beliefs and value systems yeah and then for my body i have my exercise that i don't play with also i have my strong friendships and relationships which i don't play with i have friends that have spanned over 10 years 15 years that are still very valid in my life mm-hmm. and it's also not just by because of the time i also have friends that are five to one year in my life that are also of value to you very very important yeah. and i i don't think there's anything i have to be done without the input of someone teaching i said exercising because a friend of mine said mama don't you think we should do this let's start this together and i started in 2015 and i loved it and i Reading, I have friends that I can pinpoint that taught me that this is important to do per time and the kind of books I should look for. It. Spiritually, I've had friends that have impacted me in, in, in my spiritual journey and with my career development and in my education for my career, I have the specific times and conversations I've had that spurred me to start or understand which exact journey I should be taking your time. So these things have helped me cope with the life that I have and the success or joy that emanates from and the fulfillment that emanates from that life exactly. that I have, which has helped me be the best version of me for my husband, my children, my mom, my brother, my friends and extended family. Very Thank you so much, Ma, for that input. I'm very grateful. Please, Ma, um, a lot of conversations have been held on the issue of mental health for 
women. Now we're talking women of all categories, married women, unmarried women, you know, even young ladies, single moms, everybody, every woman. Should you lend us your voice on this subject matter? Being a woman is really tough. From the day you're born, as a female, there is so much pressure on you. I know men say yes, you know, the man has a lot on shoulder. But women, that is basically money. You know? Once they can provide, they feel like they've done enough. A woman has to be everything else. I agree with you. And be perfect at it. It's not the money. You can have everything financial as a woman and that's not going to cut it. I'm telling you. So, the pressure is high in being a woman. More so when you become married. Because if your marriage fails, the first societal finger is pointing She didn't hold her home. Exactly. It affects the woman's mind in so many ways. I think if you take a, they say more men die from depression, suicidal rates. Yeah. But the reason why women are not that suicidal, in my opinion, is because of the responsibility that is on their shoulders to ensure the continuity of human human race, and also the strong relationship to build while at it. So I think that's. That helps us stay stay. Stable. I agree with you. You know, you have to know your children's teachers. You have to know a lot of even your children. Yeah, even your children and so all of that. It keeps us a bit perfect. But in the initial phases of marriage, the percentage of women going through mental health struggles are more than you can, you can guess if they'll open up to speak to you about it. I had my own struggles in the beginning and they were like the darkest darkest times for me because I was trying to transition from being the owner of me and on my own and fitting into a totally different person and pattern when I saw that I had finally arrived to be free. Unlike men who when they are married they become the bosses of themselves. They begin to submit again to new authority. authority yeah. The transition is a hard time. So for mental health for women it's a very tough battle to fight and if i were going to lend my voice i'd say the only thing that really helps you in that in that, in that battle and that fight to overcome is the spiritual side i agree but I, i'd like to ask, can we all agree that everybody needs mental help i have a question thank you go ahead and there's, no, <laughs> there's no more professional <laughs> you, you you know what i asked that because I, I, I may, may look all right to myself. Mm -hmm. I could, you know, tell myself, look, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. you, you get that. I don't need help. I don't need to listen to someone who may be, who may have conquered something that I'm currently experiencing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the help that we get, we may not even know that we need before it comes. When it comes, you never realize, oh my God, I needed this. Exactly. Or the conversation, oh my God, I really needed to hear this. Thing. Yeah, exactly. And this also still stems from, well, I don't know anything aside my spiritual side. That is no, I so. please you need to. You need, you need so to it comes from a, my belief that God orchestrates the relationships that come into our life for a time that you need what you need. Sometimes it could be just that stranger that tells you one thing and it helps you mentally. So mental health for women going back against the empty cup very important. You need to also understand the traumas that you have faced. Whatever can help yourself self-diagnose yourself first. Sit with it. Know what triggered you to be the way you are. Did you have a, a an absent dad, absent parents, critical mom? Childhood abuses. Yes. A lot of all of that. Sit with it. Accept them. This is who I am because of what I passed through. Yeah. And this is what I need to work on because this is what it's making me do. We have repeated patterns that come up from these traumas. So as a woman, if you don't know these things, you will struggle till you die. Yes. Yeah. So you need to know them first. So you don't also self-sabotage. Mm. That's true. Yeah. That's really true. Wow. So understand where you're coming from. Understand what you need, the steps you need to do, take to get out of that place. Understand when you're beginning to repeat what you were doing before and step back and say, I've started it again. And over time, this amount of times you stop yourself it becomes the habits you've built and the new self you've built and then give yourself grace so to bring this amazing chat to some sort of conclusion even if we're not happy to we wish we could you know go on and on and on there's so much that we're learning and gleaning from your experience Ma. 
What would you like to say to a young, dreamy girl who desires to have a beautiful life, like mm -hmm. a very beautiful life, mm -hmm. I mean, raise a very lovely, happy family, mm -hmm. and, you know, still be successful in her career? What would you say to this girl? <sighs> I'd say to her what I said to my daughter a few days ago. Don't settle. Mm. Don't settle. And why I say don't settle is not you not growing and choosing a pedestal to face someone. Yeah. But be the best version of you every day. Yeah. And then don't settle for anything less than that place you've worked your way to. That's what I'll tell a young dreamy girl because that's what I told the most important young dreamy girl in me. your life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. So ladies, married or unmarried, uh, single or divorced, yeah. yes, because we have to address those people yeah. too. You shouldn't stop being you. Yeah. You shouldn't stop caring for yourself. I think the most important uh uh, is it denominator or the most important factor in this conversation we've had today is you. It's you. You. You have you to matter. be okay. Yeah, you matter. You have to be okay to stay married. You have to be okay to be a mom and to even be an employee. You cannot navigate all of these things. I mean, in the list, if you are sick, you cannot be anything to anybody. Yeah. Like if you are, if you, if you have to be on a hospital bed, you cannot be anything to anybody. Mm. So that's the time you need to you know care for yourself and mm -hmm. all of that so see yourself as okay i'm sick in this area in my career or i'm sick you know as a mom i'm sick here i need to care for myself yeah. so i can be able to give the best yeah. to the people that are in my life because i feel like before you can say that you are a successful person everything in your life has to balance out you have to be a good wife yeah you have to be a good mom you also have to be a good employee a good daughter, a good sister, a good friend, a good, a good everything. So you cannot pay attention to one and leave out the other. Everything is important. Thank you so and much. And don't forget to prioritize. Yes, prioritization. Yeah. And don't procrastinate on anything uh, that you decided to do. You'll be hurting yourself in the long run. You'd wake up after 10 years and be like, or 20 years and be like where did time go time must pass yes it must we cannot stop it but we can make good use of the time. time thank you so much thank you thank, thank you, you so much, much. thank you so much Mark, for I joining had a us today. Uh, me too i did and i know our viewers did thank you so much for taking our time to watch this you can leave your comments tell us what you think tell us the areas you think we didn't touch we can always do that in our next episode. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to like our content, share our content, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and bye.